The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Hey, Good. How you guys doing? Nico? Good. Great. Good. Hey, uh, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Rhino Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. That's right, to recover our natural health and regain our rights and freedoms. I'm Paige Clark, and good morning. That's a beautiful morning in St. Petersburg, uh, Florida. It's uh, 78 degrees, a little humid, but uh, I think during the week it's going to just cool down just a few degrees, so now we're into fall. Yeah, my son just sent pictures from Tahoe. They got snow yesterday. Oh, really? Up wow. on the top of the mountain, oh, up near cool. where he works. And please subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use every day to stay healthy whatever you're doing, and it comes into your inbox twice a month. That's right, and also please pick up the Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 organic cell-ready ingredients, liquid ingredients to make it easier to take and to get the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. And give us a call this morning, 877-927-6648. Welcome hey, back. thank you, and happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was last uh, Thursday, yes. I think it was. Yeah. And I missed <clears> it, <throat> and I was thinking about you, and I, I, um, I don't think anyone here would even want to gander that you're as old as you are because you don't look it and you don't act it well what we have we have a little plan my wife and i that yeah, we celebrate more and more and so, i saw that on facebook yeah you know the, when we were 60s we thought like one day before one day after and and of course the celebrating day but now we're in the 70s the whole week and we figure in the 80s it'll be for a month and in the 90s it'll be three months why not? And uh, over that, we're partying all the time. And, and you know, that's the whole point, uh, you know. And when I say party, yeah, we're not out there doing drugs, getting drunk. We're just having a good time being you're with friends. You're celebrating you yeah. and celebrating the fact that you're here. That's right. right. Yeah. And that's really something and, we have to remember. Yeah, and it's something, looking back now, I mean, 75, I'm thinking, okay, now that's three quarters of a century. And look back to 25. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, 25, I thought people at 75 were dead. Right. You know, that's the mindset that it was. You can never picture that. Now when I'm looking back, I don't feel any different. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? it? It's amazing thing. And now I want 75 more, you know, which seems completely ludicrous, but that's the well, actually, I Well, actually, that's had. closer to what our actual lifespan is supposed to be. Kind of, that's what the sages kind of say in that. But the important thing, of course, in this whole scheme, uh, your age would be not good at all if you were in bad shape, if you were sick, if uh, somewhere along the line you got cancer or anything else, then your quality of life is really poor and then maybe you don't want to be alive. But so I say healthy, alive, that's the way I want to be. Increase your health span. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Increase your health span. Life span is idea. one thing, but health span is what's really yeah. there. And talk about enjoying yourself. You uh, were in Tahoe with your son for a little while. Went to Tahoe, see my son, and uh, then I had to go see my um, Aga doctor, you know, this dental mm -hmm. procedure that right. I'm doing. Moving along. Moving along. But I'm an older gal, so I move a little slower on and that And you part. were explaining something to me uh, uh, before we started that uh, when you broke your ankle, you thought, well, maybe this is going to have my body produce more and more of the bones that I need to fill in the gaps here. Mm -hmm. But, of course, what we were talking about is that it went straight to the repair where it needed it. The wisdom of the body. I think the body really pr knows how to prioritize things. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's one of the things we learn in natural health, that many times people will say I've got a problem here and the body won't address it because what we don't realize often is there's an underlying perhaps energetic issue that's mm -hmm. more important to fix first. Well uh, that kind of brings me to mind being a personal trainer people want to say well I want my butt smaller mm -hmm. but the rest of me is fine. <laughs> you know, right. it, well, it just doesn't work that way. Right. You know, we we have certain attributes and certain things that we don't even like about ourselves, and those things we always focus on, whereas the person who's looking at us objectively doesn't even see that probably. You're exactly right, and so, and the whole thing is sometimes we just have to kind of let nature take its course. Yeah. But yeah. what I was saying is is that 
uh, all of this expansion that I'm doing where I'm building bone or remodeling the bone in my face and my jaw. And many of us had teeth pulled, you yeah. know, when we were teenagers. Yeah. So I'm kind of trying to rebuild the bone in those four spots where those teeth were amputated, quite frankly. Right. And uh, that's going to give me more breathing space. It's creating a lengthening in my neck. I'm feeling much better mm -hmm. as a result of it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a journey, but uh, I'm glad that I'm on it. And um, I wanted to talk. It's interesting that you brought up this article this morning that um, maybe perhaps dentists don't want you to brush your teeth. And, and, and we realized that Weston Price found out when researching traditional cultures that many people that had the most beautiful dentition, all a full set of teeth, upper and lower, beautiful white enamel, mm -hmm. don't even brush their teeth all the time. Yeah, they uh, pick at it, mm -hmm. uh, little thistles, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, different kind of plants they use to chew on. Right. But yeah, they didn't brush. And uh, of course, this is the thing we're told to do. This article is interesting because it said uh, dentists actually don't want you to brush your teeth after eating these specific foods. And there are specific foods that perhaps that abrasive brush was, is actually creating more damage than, than it is doing good. Yeah. So uh, this doctor, Brian Cantor, he's a cosmetic uh, dentist that... Uh, In New York City. Yeah, New York City. And it says that brushing your teeth right after eating anything acidic or high in sugar is bad for your enamel. And this is really because the pH levels are low. Acidic foods like citrus fruits and, uh, fruits and juices are especially bad. And we should be aware of sugary foods that stick to our teeth and remain in our mouth even after brushing, such as candies and things like that. They do a lot of damage. So while you're brushing with this stuff, in, it actually attacks the enamel. This is what sugar does. That's this is what acidic foods does. Mm -hmm. And the reason I put this in here is because I started thinking of what you said about Western Price, is that people didn't brush first. And I think brushing is a good idea to do it. But these foods also probably were not part of our diet at those times. Bingo. I think that's really what you're hitting on because what happens is it's actually the biofilm that builds up on the teeth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the foods, when the sugars are sequestered in, where mm -hmm. there's lots of activity for them, right. the, the, the sugar bugs, as lots of dentists like to call it for kids, come in and they mix with the biofilm and it creates the plaque. And so many times, what we've really got is way beyond the, just the food, it's a combination of buildup, not unlike what happens in our arteries. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so. That, that was the whole premise of bringing this forward is saying, okay, well, these food weren't here. Maybe we ate a little bit of fruit in the season of the fruit, which is fall for most things, spring for some citrus. Uh, so we ate them very, very sparingly and only at particular times. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the food, the candies, the sugar, we've never had at all. wasn't even part of anything until manufactured food kind of came in. And researchers such as Weston Price realized that it was really much after the industrialization of grains and producing these convenience right. foodstuffs that he started seeing the change in the jaw and the bone and the food. And that's in our history is relatively reason. Now we, we say agriculture happened maybe 10 or 12,000 years ago, but we use those food as, our, as starvation foods. These are the foods that saved our lives and we kind of put them aside otherwise, but slowly but surely they crept in to our society because they became favored because they saved our life. Right. Uh, some of them taste rather good. Uh, you can store them. Mm -hmm. That makes it very convenient on days when you, you can't hunt or the hunts or the animals aren't around. So it became necessary to have these foods, but we really uh, changed it when we started manufacturing these foods. So right. we'll, we'll be right back. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And welcome, welcome back. back. Hey, you know we were talking about we were talking about um, maybe we shouldn't brush our teeth after certain foods, and I wanted to finish that up with the point that actually our saliva is one of the most protective mechanisms we have. And Nico and I were talking during the break. I don't think that our ancient man walked around with a water bottle, you know. They didn't have bottles, of course. And feeling like, yeah, so well, of course, yeah. and and feeling like he had to hydrate. Mm -hmm. I mean, he might be moving quite a bit, get some water, and it might be hours or, you know, half a day before they got to another well, liquid. Well, also, uh, I think ancient uh, people were very wise and knew, knew where to get water out of hard places. If they lived in the desert, they knew the plants uh -huh. that harbored it. They knew which plants to dig under. Uh, would they to follow the roots so there was a lot of things that they did and yeah we don't have to walk around with water just like all the crazy people well, my point is, is that the saliva is active because mm -hmm. they're not constantly diluting it so I think maybe ancient man had a lot of saliva in their mouth and and it was constantly bathing their teeth well the other thing is too that uh, they probably weren't walking around in midday Sun uh, exercising mm -hmm. no and those were the times when they were in the shade yeah. Uh, we're the only ones that are out in the sun all the time going, you know, yeah, they were out in the sun all the time, but they protected themselves by the shade, by the time of day, by taking siestas, mm -hmm. by being the natural lazy human that we are. We want to work when we have to work, but when we don't have to work, we want to take it easy and enjoy life. There you go. And here's an article from a Women's News Network. Dot net. Ancient indigenous diets are much more nutrient dense, says a global expert. And really what we're finding is that as Nico and I have been sharing on this show, the foods that we ate were richer due to the soil quality. One of the reasons we created the Primal Edge. Mm -hmm. let's, let's capture some of that ancient soil mineralization. Right. And uh, this article states that unprecedented levels of chronic non-communicable diseases are prompting health experts and indigenous activists to highlight a need to revert to the diets of our ancestors to regain the lost nutrients. Yeah, the rise of the industrial model of agriculture has contributed greatly to people being disconnected from food on their plates. Absolutely. And that's what we say. We say always that we want to eat locally. We and want seasonally. To eat seasonally. Uh -huh. And we want to and eat. And in cycle with the light. Yeah, cycles. in cycle with what's going on. You want to eat what's in season. And what do you see right now as far as fruits? We're getting ready to go into the cooler weather. Yeah, so right now uh, the watermelons are just ending. Well, we've got the stone fruits. Yeah. We've got the peaches and the plums. Mm -hmm. they're, they're sweeter. They're more dense. They're telling the body, store, store energy because we're getting ready to have a cold snap. 
Mm -hmm. And of course, in Florida, we don't have much of a cold snap, so perhaps we don't need as many of those things, but yeah, I think it's kind we, of interesting. And we don't have a lot of those stone uh, types of fruits here anyway. Right. No. But they're in the grocery store. Yeah, the only one we have is the avo the large avocado, which is the Florida avocado, mm -hmm. which is a little quite a bit different from, you know, we we much import, more watery than creamy. Yeah, 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 and that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you were in Florida, you'd need the water. You want to be uh, in, at peace with the environment. We have a lot of water here. There's rains a lot. Naturally, our fruit has water, so we want water too. Yeah, so here, let's read a little bit further. Indigenous diets worldwide from forest foods such as roots and tubers, which are the other thing that are in, coming into season as we enter the fall, mm -hmm. um, and foods that come from regions of eastern India to cold water fish, caribou, and seals in northern Canada. They're varied and they're suitable to local environments and they can counter malnutrition and disease. So what this is saying is when you look at what's available to you locally, you're going to be healthier. That's right. For many tribal and indigenous people, their food systems are complex, self-sufficient, and deliver a very broad-based, neutral, uh, neutrally diverse diet. Mm -hmm. So it had a lot more in their foods, too. Uh, they were packed with nutrients, and they were varied. They had a really, really uh, diverse diet as far as what they were eating. They were eating many different plants, but they were all eating many different animals, too. And here we go. The disruption of traditional lifestyles due to environmental degradation. Soil is bad, remember? Mm -hmm. And the <clears throat> introduction of processed foods, refined fats and oils, think seed oils, and simple carbohydrates. They contribute to the worsening of health of indigenous populations and a decline in the production of nutrient-rich foodstuffs that could benefit all communities. So the traditional food systems need to be documented so that we can help to, we don't. We don't want to forget right. our ancient ways of eating. That's what we really need to know. I think there's some moves to kind of keep us from knowing what is natural food. Well, they certainly have kept it out because when Betty Crocker started the uh, baking thing back at the turn of the century, this is when a lot of these foods were introduced. And we, were, um, Ellen and I, over the weekend during our. Uh, my birthday celebration we were watching different kinds of movies and some of them were documentaries and one of them was a documentary on uh, the Western how the Western uh, uh, movies and the TV programs were really behind the advertising of these box cereals, uh, the new Crisco oil. Like sit around and watch Bonanza and, and have your processed foods. You have your processed foods and you want them for Christmas. And all the other thing we noticed, the smoking was part of that deal too. Mm -hmm. So these were the advertisers that were saying, here's Smoke, some new use food. use your seed oils. And yeah. That so makes me sad because... It, it's sad because, because I Because I, I, I remember, you know, like my grandparents, I remember Ponderosa and Bonanza and... <laughs> Morton's Donuts and yeah. <laughs> my grandpa's smoking camels. Well, remember, they enticed the children to ask the parents for these because they had little prizes in the cereals. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want a little gun like Davy Crockett or his coonskin hat, you know, you can get these things through buying Post cereals or Kellogg's Corn Flakes or whatever it was. So the, this is how we built in the incentive uh, or of eating these manufactured food, and this is how they really got into our space in our mindset so they became staples. Remember, these things were not staples. They were emergency foods, and they were never looking like this. Cereals. I decided to commercialize them. You know, Before the turn of the century, the only cereal was really oatmeal, right? Right. Which is not that bad. And that's when they saw the degradation of the whole face. And keep in mind, we're, you know, we started opening up about dental health and teeth, but what we're talking about is the ability to breathe. We have an epidemic of people in CPAPs not sleeping well, not getting good airway, and this is kind of what I got working on. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go down that route, but due to the fact that I had nearly 30% of my teeth removed, you know, to make a pretty little smile, that, but all this comes back to a genetic model of my grandparents, grandparents, they stopped eating good food. Well, remember that the, the dentist uh, uh, price mm -hmm. uh, was looking at the teeth, but now you can think deeper than that. You can think, okay, if this is happening to my teeth, what's happening to my hair, my eyes, mm -hmm. my bones, yeah, all but, the skin? You know, when the jaws are malformed, everything, it Every, it's all goes downhill. If yeah, you can't breathe and repair. But the teeth are directly related to bone. I mean, it's the same system that's it building is. them. Same with the hair and the skin. Mm -hmm. These are all built by the collagen things. 
this article kind of goes downhill from here. It's more or less a uh, ploy that we should feel guilty because we eat so many animal right. foods. Again, remember, um, the goal is to make you feel guilty for eating real food and that we need to do these other things so that the planet will survive and people will survive. Well, and this is the reason I brought this in here, to show that there is some good information here, but at the same time, it turns kind of political into a global warming thing, because now all of a sudden we have to have these diets. Remember, folks, because uh, we're living so crowded, we're living in cities, we don't grow the food here, we have to rely on these foods. It just makes sense. Even though they're not healthy, it's all, all we got. No, that's, and, they, and they want you to believe that, too. Mm -hmm. We're, quite frankly, <clears throat> with a cooperation for animal foods and your own garden, you can pretty much, we could all be getting our own food. We really could, okay. if we were resourceful. Yeah, well, but, the job's kind of getting away. But then too. it goes right back after it talks about uh, this article it covers well, what's going on. Yeah, I see, we got to go uh, to a break, but they present what are nutrient-dense foods. Yeah. Oh, and the question is... If you want to enhance that, pick up the primal edge during the break, folks. That's right. We'll be right back. would like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, welcome back. So we're talking about this. Uh, where is my thing here? Uh, going back to... Oh, we're talking about the change in the diets. And, and really, we've kind of gone into the stage where they're talking about the fact that dying diets that unfortunately as we left the nutrient dense foods we resorted to eating other foods and they highlight animal foods which this is where 
Nico and I change paths with these articles. We see the political drive of these articles is to create the idea that we all need to feel guilty for breathing and for eating our natural foods, and we need to go towards processed foods. Yep. That's what so this, here, since that's 1960s, why this is going. economic growth, urbanization, and global population increased to more than 7 billion people have multiplied the consumption of animal source foods, including meats and dairy products and things like that. Oh, which should we be shame, 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 yeah, right? Contribute uh -huh. to 13% of the energy. So uh, what they're saying, of course, conventional types of livestock and uh, breeding of animals, uh, the conventional way that we do it today, I, I mean, in these large factory places. Oh, we all agree is, that's not a healthy thing. That's way to not do a it. healthy thing. The animals mm -hmm. that are roaming the plains and eating the grasses, that's the natural way, and that's what we should be promoting. Uh, and here they're promoting the exactly the opposite because now they want to get into the uh, place where it says new nutrient dense foods and they said in re recent years grains such as quino and fonio and uh, millet uh, long harvested by indigenous and rural communities in developing countries but increasingly overlooked by the younger richer uh, generation uh, that prefers imported fruit foods have instead grown in popularity in the developing nations so they're bringing these grains back because traditionally they were used certain times and of course if you look Look under the microscope you can see the protein and the vitamins are there locked into these grains however, that's the key word locked in yeah be, however we have a very very difficult time in digesting these and some people can't digest them and then I think we probably uh, digest only a small minute well this article goes into great detail about how these foods re reduce cholesterol and lower inflammation mm -hmm. could be partly true uh, again, or is this a propaganda tool to convince us that we, the serfs, should be eating the starvation foods? Don't kill, and because don't kill the king's deer. Don't kill the king's deer. Right. Correctly, there could be that the king needs to have the deer, and we aren't the kings. No, <laughs> but he, uh, unfortunately, the kings also had all the sugars and the breads and things like that, mm -hmm. and that's where they went really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things to re remember is that our indigenous people going back uh, hundreds of thousand years ate the meat, but they ate the meat cooked most of the time. Uh, when we were before fire, we didn't really go after the meat. We went after the marrow. And the reason we went after the marrow, it's protected inside a bone. Right. And meat goes rancid very quickly. So if you become a, come a, upon a kill, which our ancestors did at first instead of hunting, uh, the only thing really good to eat there, the fat was already rancid in the sun, mm -hmm. but the marrow was not. So right. they know that Lucy had tools that, and this was three and a half million years yeah, ago, we and covered dug out the marrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is how it all started. This is because marrow melts in your body. It's the thing that gets digested first. The second thing that gets digested is the cooked meat. Mm -hmm. The last thing is the plant food. So this is the way our body kind of works, and it kind of tells you the order of what we should be eating things and the way we should be eating things. So, Well, uh, let me tell you what I just read in okay. here, you know, talking about how our culture is adjusting. Mm -hmm. You know, this author is going through the fact that there are more nutritious grains, such as the ones that you sure. just covered, okay? Yep. Uh, quinoa and, and millet. And they do less damage, too. But, yeah, the Kande community in eastern Idi India uh, has traditionally grown up to eating different forms of millet. Uh, but now, the millet growing among the roughly 100,000 Kande, who are spread about 15,000 villages, has dropped by 63%. And why is this? Sure. Because they're going, the government is going to be growing subsidized rice programs. Mm -hmm. So the indigenous people uh, offering over, polished the last, rice. over the last 500 years, indigenous people have been pushed into the worst areas. Mm -hmm. We're not going to allow people who live off the land that don't own anything, that have no concept of ownership of land, have the best property. We push them to the desert, the Kalahari Desert, and they're still healthy, eating their traditional diets. Not as traditional as it used to be, not as good as it used to be, but probably still healthier than the average American. But see, what and, they're saying here yeah. is even in these traditional places where we know, like Mexico, they've grown up eating corn products, mm -hmm. and, and, and the quinoa and the millet are considered a more natural grain. Right. Okay. But th now they're being pushed away. Now, they're, those... now they want to take them to even less nutrient-dense, yeah. which is the polished white rice. This is and, what the European mindset is. We push the indigenous people out, out of the great areas, because we want And we tell areas. them, you don't know how to eat your food, and we'll, we've got you something better. You don't even better. know how to own land. Yeah. 
You so this author says when there's so much malnutrition existing in this particular area of India, and we know India's got a rise of diabetes, uh, why do you replace land which has been growing nutritious foods with rice paddies? And um, so they said that um, in 2011 that 75 percent of all children under five years old in Kandev, India suffered from wasting or weighing too little for their age and 55 percent were stunted too short for their height, a sign of chronic malnutrition. Yeah. Yeah. Another sign is that they're talking about another so-called superfood is now declining. The spirulina. spirulina. And this is because a lot of people are eating this stuff, so uh, it uh, sort of grows naturally. So uh, now we're getting into like things like kale and uh, seaweed and stuff that we hadn't used for a while. Uh, you know, we're, we're tapping into these things But I wonder so much. why it's declining in use. Um, it's not declining in use, it's uh, availability. Yeah, availability, because it says here, uh, there's a deep irony in the fact that many dietitians are advocating traditional and indigenous foods and diets, and yet the modern Western diet is what is being pushed on tribal people around the world with devastating results. So that's our whole point. Here we come in and say we have a better way, and we don't. Well, all you have to do is look at the indigenous people of America and the American Indian and mm -hmm. on the reservation, and you, all you see is people on drugs and people who are overweight. Uh, and wasting away. So it, for those people, unfortunately, they have to come into our society as Americans, not as indigenous, if we want them to be healthy, because they, they just live in the poorest areas there is. Yeah. So we've lost our primary relationship with our world around us. And Native American elders historically planned for seven generations ahead when they created their food systems, teaching each generation that it was their responsibility to ensure the survival of the seventh one and they did this by hunting and gathering only what they needed and conserving resources such as wood and water and protecting food biodiversity. Yeah. Boy, we sure have a few things to learn, don't we? That's for sure. The only thing we uh, look seven years ahead on is uh, seems like uh, war and uh, means of war and guns and things like and that. And when these American Indians were forced to assimilate, mm -hmm. again, we come in and say, hey, what white yeah. rice patties are better than what you've been doing, and, mm -hmm. and, and let's take a look at the bone structure and health of the American Indian. And, uh, but when they were forced to assimilate the historical access to their n nutritional knowledge, it was lost and it wasn't transmitted. And uh, according to the Special Diabetes Program for Indians, run by the U.S. federal government, uh, the 566 registered indigenous people in the U.S. now have a rate of diabetes nine times higher than the national average. Well, what, what's going on? We're when, sending them all of our processed foods and saying, here, eat our stuff. And you can't hunt anymore. Yeah. You can't hunt. That's a real sign right there. Yeah. That's a and they have lots of other examples here. And then at the end, they kind of talk about uh, finding a balance. And of course, this is going into the next Health, uh, health Signals newsletter, so you can read all about it. We're going to take a uh, break. We'll be right back. Yep. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionics, oil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien will be hosting a special 60-minute live webinar Wednesday night for Gold Report subscribers titled The Next Leg Up in Gold is $1,794. Find out why. In this 60-minute webinar, Tom will be discussing how the bond market moves the gold market, where the gold demand trends are coming from, how gold outperforms fiat currencies over time, 
how gold trades an average of $110 billion a day in value, along with many more topics. Subscribers to The Gold Report just closed out three positions in the last week for profits of 28%, 35%, and 51%. Now is a great time to sign up for The Gold Report. You don't want to miss out on the next big run in gold and gold equities. Sign up now for The Gold Report by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and get ready for Wednesday's live webinar with Tom O'Brien. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. As we said, we've been... Uh We've lost our way in our connection with our food and where it comes from and what we're supposed to be eating. Sure, it seems like it. And uh, as a kind of continuing from what we discussed, two indigenous populations offer a glimpse into what truly is a healthy diet and how diet and Western eating habits have impacted the health and well-being. We're going to take a look at the Simani. They're a model group. They're a population indigenous to the Bolivian Amazon, and they demonstrate next to no heart disease, the epidemic that we suffer here in the West. They have minimal hypertension, low prevalence of obesity, and their cholesterol levels are relatively healthy, and those factors don't seem to change regardless of age. I want to have what they're having. Yeah, our prior work uh, showed that the uh, uh, Simami have the healthiest hearts ever studied. So naturally, there's a lot of interest in understanding why, why yeah. and how. The, the obvious first contender is what are they eating, and uh, are they eating what we think they are for the best health? Yeah, or they and so they conducted a, a detailed analysis of the tsunami uh, diet and then compared it to what modern Americans typically eat and to the diets that claim to be heart healthy. And he continued, maybe the Samani people just happen to follow one of those without knowing about them. They don't really have a knowledge of what's, they're just doing what they've always done. And these diets, uh, paleo, Okinawan, and the DASH diet, among others, are often promoted because of their proposed health benefits. And in the case of paleo, that our bodies have evolved to benefit from particular types of food. Um, but it goes on and, and says that the, these people that are isolated in Bolivia are, are, um, are um, eating foods that they've been eating for centuries. And let me try and find this point where it says they have a high calorie diet, uh, somewhere between 24 to 2,700 kilocalories per day. And it was characterized by a high carbohydrate and protein intake and low fat intake. Mm -hmm. Okay. In addition, they didn't eat a variety, a wide variety of foods re relative to the average U.S. diet. Mm -hmm. uh, almost two thirds of the calorie were derived from complex carbohydrates, particularly plantains and rice. Uh, another 16% uh, came from the 40 species of fish and the 6% from wild game, and only 8% came from any markets that they went to. So here so they, they basically are. Basically, ate rice. And and fish. Yeah, and roots. A lot yeah. of roots, plantains mm -hmm. and things like that. So, uh, and this is what a lot of indigenous people do, uh, especially in modern times. They're mm -hmm. eating much more carbohydrates, but still very healthy because of that it's not manufactured carbohydrates, it's carbohydrates that are in their, and remember, they're and in their local environment. Yeah, and remember, these are people that are not living in the Arctic or uh, in a tropical rainforest. These are people living in, at the equator. 
-hmm. So at the equator, you're going to eat much more carbohydrates. You have to. The food is there. It's much easier on your body, and you and you, I think you need them. Uh, and remember, Bolivia is also at an altitude too, mm -hmm. so they have uh, a lot of. Uh, mountains in Bolivia and uh, my, one of my uncles was saying uh, that probably that's the most beautiful country he's ever been to. Bolivia? Yeah. Really? Oh wow. I, oh South America, I was coming back on the plane, I was riding it to a gentleman that was from Uruguay and he said you'd be shocked because Uruguay, you feel like you're in Europe mm -hmm. when you're there. It yeah. doesn't seem like a South American country but that's a whole a whole other area of the world we need to, yeah. to explore but despite the low diet diversity of this group of people there was very little evidence of micronutrient deficiencies because, again, they were cultivating their soils. They were growing foods the way they did. They were doing crop rotation so that the soils became healthy. As we know, health begins in the soil. And calcium and a few vitamins, D, E, and K, were in short, sort of short supply in their diet, but they had a rich intake of, listen to this, guys, potassium, magnesium, and selenium. These are the minerals that are highly linked to cardiovascular health and they far exceeded what we get here in the U.S. And the dietary fiber was almost double what the U.S. is. So. Yeah, another thing that's happening is they're finding out that the ones that are closer to the markets in town do are, not have those same health Yeah, and mm -hmm. they're also eating uh, more carbohydrates. Uh, not necessarily manufactured carbohydrates, just a, a tendency to eat more carbohydrates because that's what's in markets. Yeah. and. The, near those market towns, they had a high consumption of food additives. And what's the bad guy food additive? Sugar. No. No, sugar's not the bad guy. Okay. It's oil. Oil? Well, and oil would be the worst. And they say oil, yeah. sugar, and salt. Uh -huh. So yeah. basically they're saying, but let's pull that apart. None of those, the, the only one that's really bad is the processed oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And the processed that. sugar, I would say, too. I think natural sugar probably not as bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when you put it in a bag, what I'm really learning from the research, Ray Pete, is I mm -hmm. don't think um, sugar is inherently bad. It's when we put it with the processed oil. Yeah, I mean, it's a, if you're eating a 10% sugar diet, probably it's not going to kill you unless you're doing all the other bad things, too. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, I think there's a link there. Uh, certainly, our indigenous people never had it, and I, I think as you creep closer and closer to the modern era, then you're finding you're consuming more and the health goes down. So I think there is a link there. So let me give you the conclusion of this research. A high energy diet, rich in carbohydrates, is associated with low cardiovascular dis uh, disease risk. That's kind of opposite of what we say, but let's tie it into what we say, okay? Mm -hmm. so. At least this is true when it's coupled with a physically active lifestyle, and these people had a very active lifestyle. But once you move away from a diet that is high in fiber and low in fat, and you add processed oils and processed sugars and sweets and cookies and cakes and processed foods, we see a serious health risk. And this is happening in, in many indigenous populations that are becoming westernized. So the evidence of nutritional transition in Bolivia parallels the trends that we've seen in increasing, they see increasing body fat and disease as a result of adding these foodstuffs that we've made as part of our commercialization. Yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing here, calorie count aside, the high carbohydrate content of the uh, tsunami diet isn't unprecedented according to Kraft. Mm -hmm. One of the other artery protecting diets is the aqua, uh, aquinoin. Akinoan, yeah. uh, yeah, from the, Japan. From Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes out to be about 85% carbohydrate. But mm -hmm. a common feature they share is pretty much across the board. They're complex carbohydrates. It's the sweet sweet potato in the uh, Okinawan diet. It's the plantains and the manaki that are in the other diets. So these are natural roots that they've used that are high in fiber, and we know. Uh, but this is the whole point that Ray Pete says. Mm -hmm. Probably these people are also healthy because they're not using the oil mm -hmm. like let's let's say when we see a chinese restaurant or a restaurant we think that they're just taking bottles of wesson oil and cooking their food that's not the way they did it mm -hmm. oh, in, 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 uh, in traditional, traditional times. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. Not. right and it's this introduction of these oils that should not be highly heated and uh, that's i think creating the problem yeah it, if you go back to the traditional way of cooking with a wok you use lard that's what I'm saying. They cook yeah. with lard or, fish or, oil they, or, something. or they steamed it and yeah. then they might have added butter or something, something for a taste. Like I don't think yeah. they're taking the, these toxic seed oils and that's the real, 
the real damage, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, kind of to wrap this up, I say overall the findings suggest that there's no single diet protocol that offers a key to health. Well, the picture is more much more complicated. Than yeah, that. it is more complicated. It's it's a combination of changing from an indigenous way of living in a certain area based on your light cycle mm -hmm. and where you are and the foods that are available and how we serve these foods up. If we're putting them in those vegetable oils, we're going to have problems. Yep. And, um, uh, and have I got something more to say on this, so when we get back, we'll finish yeah. it up. Okay. So we'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. I just wanted to wrap that part up by saying that uh, our indigenous way of doing things was following the animals and uh, all our day was spent pretty much going after food uh, and our shelters. Yeah. Those were the two things. And then those activities themselves, I think, bring you more health because of what you're doing. Today, we're going to people like me to exercise, to fill in the void of that particular activity. So mm -hmm. I think there's a real connection when you go out and find your own food. Then you learn from those experiences and what's healthy and what's not. So that's just the way it's kind I of a scary thought, isn't it? If you had to go out and get your own food, because well, I mean, yeah. not as much for you, but I mean, I think reality Even is for me probably. Just I don't know. Very yeah. few people know what to do. Yep. But counterpoint to all of this that we've been talking about <laughs> on CNN: teenage boy goes blind after existing on Pringles and French fries. You think? Maybe this is driving home the point that it really does matter when we our bodies don't get the micronutrients that they need to stay healthy from the natural food 
and we resort to these Franken foods, bad things happen. Yeah, and this is just an example, a little extreme, I would say, but uh, his vision had worsened to the point of blindness by the age of 17, and the doctors identified that the uh, the culprit was the vitamin B12 deficiency. Not eating say, enough yeah. animal foods. And also there was a high level, uh, a high zinc level, and reduced vitamin D, and of course bone density was very, very low. Mm -hmm. uh, he was cutting to about 300 calories a day. But this is just an example of uh, when you eat bad food, bad things are going to happen to you. And the, mm -hmm. th this is the ultimate Pringles, white bread, french fries, highly processed foods, foods that are ne not even indigenous to the area that he is. Uh, I mean, french fries comes from potatoes, usually just found in Bolivia. There was a few potatoes in the New World, but they were really rather small. I don't think we even eat them today. Well, well I mean, I'm Irish. We think of potatoes from being from Ireland. Are you saying that they're not native there? No. They right. were brought in in the 1600s by the people who visited the uh, Andes. Okay. And that's what, that's how Even they... to the old world, not... Yeah. not no, not... The, new, the old world never saw beans. They never saw squashes. They never Meaning saw... Meaning all of Europe and so all forth. All of Europe uh -huh. and Asia. Right. Okay. And they never saw uh, potatoes. Mm-hmm. Tomatoes. Wow. Vine, peanuts, things like that. So these are all new world foods, and that's why so many people are uh, allergic to them because they're not part of our thousands of years. Of, and for me, uh, peanuts was. So the we got to eat real food, folks. That's the basic thing, you know. That's what our program is about. This is what I'm studying. This is what. Uh, if you have.